Hi, it's the Wire. It's August the 14th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Now, right now, I'm looking at oddschecker.com's site. Right? By the way, for those in the United States, oddschecker.com, a British site, now has an American sub-site. All you have to do is click on the American flag, right? The British side is better, but if you want to deal with American odds, I would encourage you to look at oddschecker.com. Now, right now, I'm looking at the odds for Vasil Lomachenko versus Luke Campbell. Now, understand, Anthony Kralla, who got KO'd early by Lomachenko, is going around saying, gee, Lomachenko might be unbeatable right now. In some outfits, Lomachenko is a minus 1,800 and higher. What that means is that the casino is telling you that if these guys fought 19 times, Lomachenko would win 18 of the 19. Right? Luke Campbell in some outfits, is an 8-to-1 underdog and higher, right? Bet a dollar to win $8 plus the return of the dollar you bet. Now, given that Lomachenko has been on fire, has just put together a very impressive run where he's beat guys like Jose Pedraza, right? And, of course, Anthony Corrala. And has looked good doing so. Jorge Linares, right, has looked good doing so. Beats Linares by stoppage. How could we possibly bet on this fight? Well, let me just tell you, in life, I've found that when you're a contrarian, that's where you make most of your money, right? For example, today, again, it's August the 14th, the stock market is in tatters. I do own some stocks. I'm not here to say otherwise, right? But I can tell you my silver plays and my gold plays are doing well. As I have said in the past here online, nothing I say in a video is going to get you more money long term, in my opinion, than gold, silver, Bitcoin, right? And dash, one man's opinion. Well, I believe this fight is bettable. Because if you look at all the casino is offering, you're going to notice that the over-under on this fight is eight and a half rounds. Let's be clear what that means. That means the midway point of the ninth round, right? That's your over-under. The bet I like here is the over Right? We'll go into the reasons, but I like the over. And I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit, and this is just a numbers play, on Luke Campbell to win the fight. Let's talk about it. Now, it's hard to get an edge on the casino in this one. Right? You have two 31 year olds, two Olympic gold medalists. Right? Loma is multiple. I'll acknowledge that here. But you have two Olympic gold medalists. You have Southpaw against Southpaw. And the visual is going to be bad. <clears throat> Loma is the shorter man. He can lead. He has the hand speed advantage. Right? Luke Campbell likes to be a counter puncher. So I believe you're going to have a visual here of the shorter man being the hunter. Right? Let me say, too, that I know the fight is in Luke Campbell's backyard. But certain guys are fan favorites globally. Right? In my opinion, it doesn't matter where, for example, Manny Pacquiao fights. Right? The crowd is going to love him. Certain guys have that charisma. Certain guys have that reputation. 
I believe Vasyl Lomachenko is one of those fighters. Right? Don't get me wrong. Luke Campbell's very happy to fight in the UK. Right? He'll have more fans than he would have if he fought elsewhere. Right? But understand, fight fans appreciate great boxers. When you see a guy who might be historical, a guy who takes that burden seriously, in other words, he's going around fighting people like Guillermo de Gundio because he knows you want to see him against Olympic gold medalists. He's fighting Luke Campbell here. Right? The idea that he fights Jorge Linares, a guy who, in my opinion, is a future Boxing Hall of Famer. We can discuss that in another video. Right? The fact that you know Lomachenko is serious about fighting the best. I consider Pedraza to be one of the most skilled fighters in the entire sport. He fought Pedraza. He held his own. He pulled away late in that fight. Right? Well, let me just say, I feel that Loma is that guy who, number one, is mentally tough. He'll fight you on the road. That's what he does. Right? He comes to your house and he beats you up in front of your family. But number two, you'll find that as he's beating you up in front of your family, members of your family are secretly rooting for him. Right? So understand, it's going to be a tough fight because people are going to see Loma on his front foot. He's going to be testing Luke Campbell. Campbell is more counter than lead. Right? Campbell, the bigger man, um, is going to look like the submissive. Right? So it's going to be a bad looking fight. And of course, people in the crowd, in Campbell's backyard, are going to feel that Campbell's trying to climb Mount Everest. Certainly the bookies feel that. Anytime a guy's an 18-1 to 1 favorite and stuff like that. The bookies don't consider it to be a competitive fight. So the crowd is going to view this as someone special against our local guy who we're rooting for. Right? But our local guy isn't historical. Like this guy. If you have a list of the best in the sport pound for pound, certainly there are other names on it, right? Usyk, uh, Canelo, right? Certainly there are other names on it. Pacquiao, in my opinion, still. But understand that one of the names is certainly Vasyl Lomachenko, right? But... It's on the butt where you make your money. Campbell has only lost twice. Both by split decision. In fights in which he got dropped. And got off the canvas. Went the distance both times. Right? This is the guy who has faced adversity in the ring. He's very good at distance. He's very good at spacing. He has a very good jab. Right? Now, I'm not saying that jab against a fighter with Loma's collateral movement is going to keep Loma outside the whole fight. I do expect Loma to collapse the pocket at times and to throw a lot of punches. But that jab's there. Every round has to start. Loma is going to have to pay something for the real estate. In other words, there's something keeping Loma mindful. Loma can't just dive in against a guy with Campbell's jab. Campbell also carries his hands high. In my opinion, he's better than average defensively. Right? He is a counterpuncher, but understand, He's fought world-class opposition. Like Loma, he fought Jorge Linares, right? He gets dropped in the second round. 
as I've said, he's faced adversity. He gets off the canvas. He throws 100 more punches than Linares. Right now, while he wasn't as efficient as Linares, he did land one more punch in the fight than Linares. Now, I, I found that remarkable because, again, I view Campbell as a counterpuncher. But yet, for a counterpuncher, this guy actually has decent volume, right? Now, let me just say, but for his slow start, Linares does win some of the early rounds and, of course, drops him in the early rounds, Campbell would have won that fight. Because in my opinion, Campbell actually was the better fighter over the second half of the fight. In other words, this is a guy who's making adjustments as the fight went along. Let me just say too, fight style wise, Loma is going to pressure you, right? Look at the Nicholas Walters fight where Loma's on him, doesn't give him room to breathe. You have a whole group of guys, Jason Sosa, another one, who got suffocated by Lomachenko, right? Loma has a lot of energy. It's one of his best traits. Understand, the Linares fight was competitive until the later rounds, until the round where Linares hits the canvas, right? By the way, Loma hits the canvas in that fight as well. Loma has faced adversity in the ring. Let's remember, Loma lost his first fight to um, Orlando Salido, right? So both of these guys have bounced back in fights. Well, let me just say, both the Linares and the Pedraza fight just had Loma wilting both guys. In other words, very competitive matches until you get to the last few rounds. Then Loma's stamina took over. Well, understand, Luke Campbell's faced a guy like this. The Ivan Mendy fights. Now, understand, he loses the first one. He gets dropped in the first one. Gets off the canvas, goes the distance. Right? The second fight does much better. Beats Mendy. Mendy's a guy with a lot of energy. Right? Just like Loma. Mendy's coming forward. Mendy had a hand speed advantage in that fight. Just like Loma. But understand, like Bernard Hopkins, Luke Campbell knows how to box. Campbell goes the distance in both of those fights. So when you think about Luke Campbell, understand, he's gone the distance with Linares. He went the distance both times with Mendy, right? All of his losses are close losses. He's competitive in matches. He's never been stopped in a fight. Does not panic when he gets off the canvas. So visually, it is a tough fight, right? Loma is going to be flurrying. Loma, I called him a southpaw. He's actually ambidextrous. He's going to be giving Campbell different looks. But understand, Campbell is an Olympic gold medalist for a reason. He has not been protected in his career, right? He's taken tough fights. I believe the over-under is a little bit low here. Eight and a half rounds, according today to Odds Checker. Eight and a half rounds. In other words, if Campbell can make it to the last three rounds of the fight, the 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds, Right? If he could, hell, if he could just make it to the second half of the ninth round, you've won the bet. Given that Campbell has never been stopped, never been stopped, right? Given that Campbell, like Loma, has fought high level opposition, given that Campbell is aware of Loma's style, in other words, Campbell's going to look on film. He's going to see Loma bouncing on both halves of the pocket. 
he's going to see Loma, right, leading at times, countering at times, right-handed at times, left-handed at times. He can look at the whole package, looking at the Nicholas Walters film. Given that he understands Loma's going to try to get inside, and given that Campbell can fight inside, right? I feel confident in Campbell's abilities around the pocket. And given that the betting public seems to be placing too much emphasis, way too much emphasis, on the Anthony Crawla fight, where Loma uncharacteristically gets an early stoppage. Understand, Pedraza goes the distance against him. Linares makes it to the later rounds against him. Right? But yet, the focus on the betting line seems to be this idea that Loma packs a big punch and is going to be able to stop an above-average defensive fighter who's never been dropped, excuse me, never been stopped before. He's been dropped and not stopped inside of eight and a half rounds. I'm going to take my chances here. I like the over eight and a half rounds, right? I'll hedge the play with Campbell to win simply because the odds are too huge, right? You're going to give me eight to one? I'm supposed to believe that if these guys, this is on the Campbell side, if these guys fought nine times, Luke Campbell would lose eight of them? Really, a guy whose two losses were by split decision? A guy who looked better in the second half of the Linares fight than Linares did? Sorry, I'm, I'm just not buying it. A guy who made adjustments and beat Mendy by a few rounds in that rematch after looking clueless against him in the opening part of their first match. Right? So, to me, I'm expecting this fight to go several rounds. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. If Vasilomachenko repeats what he did to Anthony Kralla, if he's reached the part of his career where he's going to sit down on punches and take guys out, Right, Corrala, when he hits the canvas, it's a scary knockout. Right, you wondered whether Corrala was okay. If Vasilomachenko comes out and destroys Luke Campbell inside of the first eight and a half rounds of this fight, you lose it all. Right, so my primary bet is the over eight and a half rounds, hedged with Campbell to win the fight. Now understand, I'm not going to cry if Campbell wins the fight inside of eight and a half rounds because the hedge, the hedge is paying me a plus 800, right? And I do believe this is a fight that's much more competitive than this betting line suggests. Pay attention to the odds, right? When a guy is up at eight to one underdog range, Right? Think of it this way. They're telling you that if these guys fought 16 times, excuse me, if these guys fought not 16 times, 18 times, they're telling you that Lomachenko would win 16 of the 18. Right? 16 of the 18. If they fought 10 times, they're telling you statistically, that Campbell wouldn't quite win two fights. An Olympic gold medalist who's only lost twice by split decision and who has faced the guy, Mendy, whose fight style is somewhat similar to Lomachenko in terms of fast hands, volume, stamina. Right? I like the over eight and a half rounds when a guy is an 8-1 to one underdog, I'll swing for the fences. I'll throw a little bit on Luke Campbell simply to win. But you're at risk those first eight and a half rounds if Loma gets the stoppage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.